Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 50 years of sharing God's unconditional love and grace. And now, Andrew continues teaching from the life-changing Word of God about Don't Limit God. Welcome to our Tuesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm into my third week of teaching on Don't Limit God. I tell you, I've got A GREAT TEACHING ON THIS. I HAVE HEARD HUNDREDS OF PEOPLE TELL ME ABOUT THIS PERSONALLY, HOW THIS JUST CHANGED THEIR LIFE. AND I HAVE BEEN TESTIFYING THAT THIS IS THE SECOND MOST IMPORTANT THING THAT I BELIEVE GOD EVER SPOKE TO ME WAS JANUARY THE 31ST, 2002. GOD TOLD ME FROM PSALM 78, 41 THAT I WAS LIMITING HIM BY MY SMALL THINKING. AND SINCE THAT TIME, OUR MINISTRY HAS JUST TOTALLY, TOTALLY CHANGED. THE INFLUENCE, THE IMPACT, THE NUMBER OF PEOPLE THAT WE'RE REACHING, EVERYTHING HAS JUST CHANGED EXPONENTIALLY. AND IN THE SAME WAY AS IT'S TRANSFORMED MY LIFE, I BELIEVE THAT THIS WOULD TRANSFORM YOUR LIFE. SO THAT'S WHAT WE'RE TALKING ABOUT. AND I'VE COVERED A LOT OF THINGS, BUT I'VE BEEN TALKING LAST WEEK, I WAS TALKING ABOUT HOW I I WAS JUST KIND OF LAZY. I WAS COMFORTABLE WHERE I WAS, AND ONE OF THE REASONS I DIDN'T WANT TO CHANGE AND PRESS AND GO FOR THE THINGS OF GOD WAS BECAUSE I WAS CONTENT. YOU NEED TO BE SATISFIED, BUT NOT CONTENT. OR MAYBE YOU SHOULD SAY, MAYBE YOU NEED TO BE CONTENT, BUT NOT SATISFIED. BUT ANYWAY, THERE NEEDS TO BE THIS SATISFACTION WITH GOD, BUT YET A STRETCHING, BECAUSE NONE OF US HAVE EVER MANIFESTED GOD FULLY IN OUR LIFE. WE, NONE OF US HAVE FULFILLED GOD'S PLAN FOR OUR LIFE COMPLETELY. SO THERE NEEDS TO BE THIS CONSTANT STRETCHING. AND I HAD JUST GOTTEN COMFORTABLE. AND THEN I HAD A FEAR OF MAN. I HAD A FEAR OF PERSECUTION. I HAD A FEAR OF BEING CRITICIZED MORE AND ALL THESE KIND OF THINGS. BUT WHAT I STARTED TALKING ABOUT YESTERDAY WAS THAT I HAD A FEAR OF SUCCESS. I HAVE SEEN MORE PEOPLE DESTROYED THROUGH SUCCESS THAN HAVE EVER BEEN DESTROYED THROUGH HARDSHIP AND PROBLEMS. MOST PEOPLE, WHEN PROBLEMS HIT, TURN TO THE LORD. BUT MOST PEOPLE, WHEN EVERYTHING'S GOING GOOD, THEY WALK AWAY FROM THE LORD, MAYBE NOT IN REJECTION OR IN REBELLION, BUT JUST A LACK OF DEPENDENCY UPON GOD, AND THAT'LL DESTROY YOU. SO YESTERDAY, I USED SAUL AS AN EXAMPLE OF THIS, THAT IT SAYS IN 1 SAMUEL CHAPTER 15, SAMUEL SPOKE TO HIM AND HE SAYS, WHEN YOU WERE LITTLE IN YOUR OWN EYES, THEN GOD EXALTED YOU. BUT AS HE GOT LIFTED UP IN PRIDE, THEN GOD TOTALLY REJECTED HIM. HERE'S ANOTHER EXAMPLE THAT GOD CALLED DAVID IN 1 SAMUEL CHAPTER 13 AND VERSE 14. HE SAYS THAT HE HAD SOUGHT A MAN AFTER HIS OWN HEART. AND WE KNOW NOW THAT THAT WAS DAVID, AND HE ANOINTED DAVID. AND WHEN DAVID STARTED uh, FOLLOWING GOD IN 1 SAMUEL CHAPTER 16, DAVID WAS SO HUMBLE. HE WAS DEPENDENT UPON GOD. MAN, HE WORSHIPED GOD. HE WENT OUT IN CHAPTER 17 AND HE SLEW GOLIATH. AND HE JUST CONTINUED TO SERVE GOD. SAUL BECAME HIS FATHER-IN-LAW, AND YET HE TOOK HIS WIFE AWAY FROM HIM AND GAVE HER TO ANOTHER MAN. HE TRIED TO KILL DAVID, AND DAVID, INSTEAD OF RETALIATING, HE JUST KEPT SEEKING GOD. HE HUMBLED HIMSELF. THERE WAS A NUMBER OF TIMES HE COULD HAVE KILLED HIS FATHER-IN-LAW IN SELF-DEFENSE. NOBODY WOULD HAVE CRITICIZED HIM FOR IT. AND YET HE JUST KEPT SERVING THE LORD. AND DAVID WAS SUCH A POWERFUL MAN IN SO MANY WAYS. BUT LOOK AT THIS. IN 2 SAMUEL CHAPTER 11, IT SAYS, AND IT CAME TO PASS AFTER THE YEAR WAS EXPIRED AT THE TIME WHEN KINGS GO FORTH TO BATTLE THAT DAVID SENT JOAB AND HIS SERVANTS WITH HIM AND ALL ISRAEL, AND THEY DESTROYED THE CHILDREN OF AMMON AND BESIEGED RAHAB, BUT DAVID TARRIED STILL AT JERUSALEM. SO THE VERY FIRST THING THAT HAPPENED WAS WHEN DAVID WAS LITTLE AND WHEN THINGS WERE NOT GUARANTEED, WELL, THEN DAVID LED THE CHARGE. DAVID WENT OUT AND FOUGHT THESE BATTLES, AND GOD WAS WITH HIM, AND HE PROSPERED EVERYWHERE HE WENT. BUT THIS IS TOWARDS THE END OF DAVID'S LIFE, OR LATER IN DAVID'S LIFE, AFTER DAVID HAD BEEN FIRMLY ESTABLISHED AS THE KING OF BOTH ISRAEL AND JUDAH. HE HAD GOTTEN TO A PLACE WHERE THIS WAS NOT A MAJOR BATTLE. HE DIDN'T HAVE TO PUT HIMSELF OUT. AND IT SAYS IT WAS THE TIME WHEN KINGS GO FORTH TO BATTLE. IN OTHER WORDS, YOU KNOW, THIS IS BACK WHEN THEY DIDN'T HAVE SOME OF THE THINGS THAT WE HAVE TODAY. AND and THERE WAS A CERTAIN TIME OF THE YEAR WHEN YOU COULD FIGHT. OTHER TIMES IT WAS TOO COLD, IT WAS TOO WET, AND YOU JUST COULDN'T DO THINGS. SO THIS WAS THE TIME WHEN BATTLES WERE FOUGHT. THERE WAS STILL TERRITORY TO BE CONQUERED FROM WHAT GOD HAD TOLD THE ISRAELITES. AND DAVID WAS THE KING 
kings went forth to battle, but David didn't go. He was now so prosperous that he could stay in Jerusalem, and he sent Joab, the general of his armies, out to do his fighting. So in other words, this is depicting that he was now successful. He was so successful. This wasn't a major deal. He just sent his general, his soldiers out to do his fighting for him. He remained at Jerusalem. And look at this in verse 2, and it came to pass in an eventide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. Now, let me ask you that if you are just getting up when the sun is going down, what does that mean? That means that you've been sleeping during the day. Most people work during the day. Most people have things to do. What this describes is that David now was so successful that things were working so good that David was bored. David was sleeping during the day, and he got up off of his bed as the sun set, and he walked on the king's roof, and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And of course, most people know this story, that David went and took uh, Bathsheba, had sex with her, and she got pregnant, and then in an effort to hide what he had done, he actually sent for the husband and called him back from the battle and, uh, and tried to get him to go in to his wife and have sex with her so that it would look like the child was Uriah's instead of David's, when that didn't work because Uriah had so much integrity that he would not go home and have a relationship with his wife while all of his uh, fellow soldiers were out there fighting the battle. Well, then David sent a note by Uriah to Joab and said, put Uriah in one of the worst places to fight, and when the battle gets severe, have everybody withdraw from him and let them kill him. And David used the enemy to kill Uriah, and then he went and took Bathsheba as his wife. But it says here in the last verse, the last part of this 27th verse of the 11th chapter, it says, But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. I tell you, that is an understatement. You, David not only committed adultery, but committed murder trying to cover up his adultery. And then in the 12th chapter, God reproves David for this. And I'm not going to take time to read the whole thing, but you know, basically what it was, he told, well, let me just read some of it. I'm going to read a portion of this. He says in verse 7, and Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul, and I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Let me just, before I read the rest of this, let me just say that, you know, it reveals in the New Testament in Mark chapter 10, Jesus was speaking, and He said that from the beginning, God made them male and female, and He never intended for a man to have more than one wife. And yet, under the old covenant, He allowed people to have multiple wives. But Jesus said this was not God's will. From the beginning, He made them male and female, one man and one woman. He never intended polygamy, but God allowed it. And they asked the question, well, then why did Moses allow it? Moses himself even had multiple wives. Why did Moses allow this? Because of the hardness of your heart, He allowed these kind of things. And so, Jesus showed that it was not God's will to have multiple wives, and yet here God is saying, look, I gave you the wives, plural, of your master, and David himself I had, I forgot how many wives, but it was um, close to 10, 13, I think it was, something like that. And they, God allowed all of this, even though it wasn't His perfect will, and He said unto me, and He says, if that had been too little, I would have given you more. Even though this wasn't God's perfect will, He would have allowed David to have more wives, but the problem wasn't what David did as far as with Bathsheba. The real problem was that David was now to a place of success to where he didn't have to be dependent upon God. He didn't have to follow God. He was king. In a sense, he was the absolute dictator, and David could do whatever he wanted. And when he got to where there was no restraints upon him and he could do anything, David went out and committed adultery and murdered the husband of the woman trying to cover up his adultery. 
AND THIS IS WHAT GOD REBUKED HIM OVER WAS BASICALLY THE FACT THAT HE HAD TURNED AWAY FROM GOD. IT WAS THE FACT THAT HE HAD LOST HIS INTIMACY AND HIS RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD, AND NOW THAT HE WAS KING, AND NOW THAT HE COULD DO ANYTHING, HE DIDN'T NEED GOD ANYMORE. SO THIS IS WHAT HE GOES ON TO SAY IN VERSE 9. HE SAYS, WHEREFORE HAST THOU DESPISED THE COMMANDMENT OF THE LORD TO DO EVIL IN HIS SIGHT? THOU HAST KILLED URIAH THE HITTITE WITH THE SWORD, AND HAST TAKEN HIS WIFE TO BE THY WIFE, AND THOU HAST SLAIN HIM WITH THE SWORD OF THE CHILDREN OF AMMON. NOW THEREFORE THE SWORD SHALL NEVER DEPART FROM THINE HOUSE, BECAUSE THOU HAST DESPISED ME, AND HAST TAKEN THE WIFE OF URIAH THE HITTITE TO BE THY WIFE. NOTICE WHAT HE SAID, DAVID, YOU DESPISE ME. YOU KNOW, THERE'S PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM RIGHT NOW THAT YOU'VE COMMITTED ADULTERY, AND IT, it DOESN'T HAVE TO BE A SEXUAL SIN LIKE IT WAS WITH DAVID, BUT MAYBE YOU HAVE DEPARTED FROM GOD IN SOME OTHER WAYS AND YOU'VE DONE THINGS. AND EVEN THOUGH WHAT YOU'VE DONE IS WRONG, AND EVEN THOUGH IT IS NOT PLEASING TO THE LORD WHAT YOU'VE DONE, THE WORST THING IS, LIKE THE LORD SAID HERE, DAVID, YOU DESPISED ME. MANY OF YOU WOULD THINK, WELL, I DIDN'T DESPISE THE LORD. I STILL LOVE THE LORD, BUT I JUST COULDN'T HELP MYSELF OVER HERE. KNOW WHAT IT IS. YOU DESPISED THE LORD. WHEN YOU GO OUT AND DEPART FROM GOD AND YOU COMMIT SIN, YOU ARE SAYING, GOD, I DON'T LIKE YOUR uh, STANDARDS THAT YOU'VE IMPOSED. I DON'T AGREE WITH YOU. MY WAY'S BETTER. YOU KNOW, THERE'S A COUPLE OF TIMES IN SCRIPTURE IT SAYS, THERE IS A WAY THAT SEEMETH RIGHT UNTO A MAN, BUT THE END THEREOF ARE THE WAYS OF DEATH. AND WHEN A PERSON SINS, THEY'RE JUST, IN A SENSE, DESPISING GOD. MOST PEOPLE THINK, NO, I DIDN'T DESPISE GOD, BUT YOU REALLY DID. YOU KNOW, WITH MY KIDS, I TRIED TO MAKE THIS POINT. I REMEMBER THAT WHEN THEY FIRST STARTED DRIVING, WE PUT A CURFEW ON THEM, AND I FORGOT NOW WHAT IT WAS, BUT I THINK IT WAS 11 O'CLOCK OR SOMETHING. THEY HAD TO BE BACK. AND IF I SAID, YOU BE HOME AT 11 O'CLOCK, THEY WOULD BE HOME AT 11.10 OR 11.15. THEY'D JUST PUSH THE en ENVELOPE. AND, YOU KNOW, MOST OF THE TIME WHEN THAT HAPPENS, A PARENT WILL SIT THERE AND SAY SOMETHING LIKE, YOU KNOW, YOU SHOULDN'T BE OUT LATE. IF YOU WERE TO HAVE A FLAT, IF, if YOU WERE TO RUN OUT OF GAS, IF SOMETHING WAS TO HAPPEN, THAT'S WHEN ALL of THE CRAZIES ARE OUT. THAT'S WHEN THINGS GO BAD AND YOU COULD BE HURT. AND ALL OF THOSE THINGS ARE TRUE. BUT DID YOU KNOW WHAT THE REAL ISSUE IS WHEN YOU TELL YOUR CHILD TO BE HOME AT 11 O'CLOCK AND THEY COME IN AT 11 15? YOU KNOW WHAT THE REAL ISSUE IS? IT'S NOT THE FACT THAT THOSE 15 MINUTES, THAT SOMETHING, YOU KNOW, ONCE YOU GET PAST 11 O'CLOCK, JUST IMMEDIATELY THE DEVIL IS LOOSED AND ALL THAT. EVEN THOUGH IT IS TRUE THAT THERE ARE PROBLEMS AND MAYBE INCREASED DANGERS AND THINGS LIKE THAT, YOU KNOW WHAT THE REAL ISSUE IS? IT'S THE FACT THAT YOU DON'T HAVE A CONSTITUTIONAL RIGHT. THERE IS NO GUARANTEE THAT I HAVE TO GIVE YOU OUR CAR AND TRUST YOU AND DO ALL OF THIS, BUT I VOLUNTARILY TRUSTED YOU. I GAVE YOU SOMETHING, AND YOU DESPISED ME. YOU BROKE MY TRUST. YOU MAY NOT ALWAYS SAY IT THAT WAY, BUT THAT REALLY IS THE ROOT OF THE PROBLEM. NOW, AGAIN, THERE ARE THINGS THAT CAN HAPPEN IF YOU STAY OUT LATE, AND I ACKNOWLEDGE ALL OF THAT, BUT THE REAL PROBLEM IS WHEN YOU TELL YOUR CHILDREN, COME IN AT 11, AND THEY COME IN AT 11, 15, THE REAL PROBLEM IS THAT THEY BROKE YOUR TRUST. THEY DIDN'T HONOR YOU. THEY DESPISED YOU. THEY SAID WHAT YOU SAY ISN'T IMPORTANT. 15 MINUTES ISN'T A BIG DEAL. IT'S OKAY. NO, THE 15 MINUTES ISN'T SUCH A BIG DEAL, BUT THE TRUST THAT YOU BROKE IS A BIG DEAL. THAT'S A HUGE DEAL. DID YOU KNOW WHEN I WAS A KID, AND AGAIN, I'M NOT SAYING THIS IN A BRAGGING WAY. I'M JUST SAYING IT TO ILLUSTRATE WHAT I'M TALKING ABOUT. BUT I THINK MY CURFEW WHEN I WAS A KID WAS LIKE 1030, OR IT MIGHT HAVE BEEN 11, BUT I WOULD ALWAYS COME IN 20 OR 30 MINUTES EARLY BEFORE I HAD TO BE HOME BECAUSE I REALIZED MY MOTHER TRUSTED ME. MY DAD DIED WHEN I WAS 12 YEARS OLD. MY MOTHER AND I WERE REAL CLOSE, AND IF MY MOTHER TOLD ME TO BE IN AT 11, I'D BE IN AT 1030. I THINK THAT THERE'S ONLY ONE TIME OUT OF ALL OF THE TIME I WAS LIVING AT HOME BEFORE I GOT DRAFTED AND WENT TO VIETNAM AND THEN CAME HOME AND THINGS CHANGED ONCE I WAS GROWN. BUT WHEN I WAS LIVING AT HOME AND UNDER MY MOTHER'S CONTROL, I THINK THERE'S ONLY ONE TIME THAT I CAME IN LATER THAN WHAT SHE AND uh, TOLD ME TO, AND IT WAS BECAUSE I LOCKED MY KEYS IN THE CAR AFTER GOING TO A MOVIE, AND uh, BACK IN that, THOSE DAYS, WE DIDN'T HAVE CELL PHONES. IT TOOK ME A WHILE, BUT I WENT AND FOUND A PAY PHONE. I CALLED HER. I TOLD HER WHAT HAD HAPPENED, AND I WAS A FEW MINUTES LATE GETTING HOME, BUT IT WAS BECAUSE OF A CRISIS DEAL, AND I EVEN LET HER KNOW ABOUT IT. I MEAN, I JUST WOULDN'T VIOLATE THIS BECAUSE IT WASN'T ABOUT THE 10 MINUTES OR THE 15 MINUTES THAT YOU'RE LATE. IT'S THIS TRUST
AND THIS IS WHAT THE LORD WAS TELLING DAVID. DAVID, IF YOU DIDN'T HAVE ENOUGH WIVES, I'D HAVE GIVEN YOU MORE WIVES, EVEN THOUGH THAT WASN'T HIS PERFECT WILL. I'D HAVE DONE ANYTHING. I'D HAVE DONE ALL OF THESE THINGS. HOW COULD YOU HAVE DONE THIS AND HAVE DESPISED ME? AND YOU KNOW HOW HE DID IT? BECAUSE HE WAS TO A PLACE WHERE HE WAS SO PROSPEROUS, HE WAS SO SUCCESSFUL, HE HAD WON BATTLE AFTER BATTLE AFTER BATTLE. DAVID HAD NEVER EXPERIENCED DEFEAT. EVERYTHING HE HAD DONE, IT'S LIKE THE MIGHTIEST TOUCH, HE JUST TOUCHED IT, IT TURNED TO GOLD. LATER, YOU CAN SEE IN FIRST CHRONICLES, CHAPTER 29, THAT DAVID LITERALLY GAVE BILLIONS OF DOLLARS WORTH OF GOLD AND SILVER AND PRECIOUS STONES FOR THE BUILDING OF THE TEMPLE OUT OF HIS PERSONAL ACCOUNT. THE MAN WAS A BILLIONAIRE. HE HAD MONEY. HE HAD SUCCESS. HE HAD AUTHORITY. HE HAD SUCCEEDED LIKE NOBODY EVER HAD, BUT SUCCESS RUINED HIM, AND HE GOT TO A PLACE TO WHERE HE WASN'T SEEKING GOD. HE WASN'T DOING WHAT GOD CALLED HIM TO DO. HE WAS SLEEPING DURING THE DAY. HE WAS BORED. HE WAS NO LONGER FOCUSED. AND I'VE SEEN THINGS LIKE THIS THAT SUCCESS DESTROYS PEOPLE. AND BECAUSE OF THAT, I ACTUALLY HAD A FEAR THAT IF I TOOK OFF THE LIMITS AND IF I STARTED LETTING GOD FLOW THROUGH ME AND ACCOMPLISH WHAT I KNEW WAS HIS WILL FOR MY LIFE, I WAS FEARFUL THAT I MIGHT SUCCUMB THE SAME WAY. AND LIKE I SAID ON MY PROGRAM YESTERDAY, THE LORD FINALLY SPOKE TO ME AND TOLD ME THAT HE HAD SPENT 34 YEARS PREPARING ME FOR THIS AND I JUST NEEDED TO TRUST HIM. LET ME GIVE YOU ANOTHER EXAMPLE OF THIS AND THIS IS ABOUT ELIJAH. AND ELIJAH APPEARED ON THE SCENE IN 1 KINGS CHAPTER 17. HE SPOKE TO THE KING. HE CALLED FOR A DROUGHT. AFTER THREE AND A HALF YEARS OF DROUGHT, THE NATION WAS DEVASTATED. ELIJAH CAME BACK, CALLED THE KING TOGETHER AND ALL OF THE PROPHETS. HE CALLED uh, FIRE DOWN OUT OF HEAVEN AND DESTROYED A uh, SACRIFICE THAT HE HAD MADE. THE ENTIRE NATION IN 1 KINGS CHAPTER 18 FELL DOWN ON THEIR FACE AND SAID, THE LORD, HE IS THE GOD. THE LORD, HE IS THE GOD. AND HE KILLED ALL OF THE PROPHETS OF BAAL AND ALL OF THE PROPHETS OF THE GROVE. HE ALSO RAISED A WIDOW'S SON FROM THE DEAD. THE VERY FIRST TIME IN THE HISTORY OF THE BIBLE THAT SOMEBODY HAD BEEN RAISED FROM THE DEAD. AND EVERYTHING THAT um, ELIJAH DID JUST PROSPERED. THE MAN WAS SUPER SUCCESSFUL. HE HAD STOOD AGAINST THE KING, AGAINST ALL OF THE ARMIES, AGAINST THE PROPHETS OF BAAL, AND HE HAD WON HANDS DOWN. BUT RIGHT AFTER ALL OF THESE SUCCESSES, IT SAYS IN CHAPTER 19, VERSE 1, AND AHAB TOLD JEZEBEL, THAT WAS HIS WIFE, THE QUEEN, ALL THAT ELIJAH HAD DONE, AND WITH ALL HOW HE HAD SLAIN ALL OF THE PROPHETS WITH THE SWORD, AND JEZEBEL SENT A MESSENGER UNTO ELIJAH, SAYING, SO LET THE GODS DO TO ME, AND MORE ALSO, IF I MAKE NOT THY LIFE AS THE LIFE OF ONE OF THEM BY TOMORROW ABOUT THIS TIME. IN OTHER WORDS, THIS IS SAYING THAT, ELIJAH, YOU KNOW, I'M GOING TO KILL YOU THE WAY YOU KILLED ALL OF THESE PROPHETS. ELIJAH KILLED 450 PROPHETS OF BAAL AND 400 PROPHETS OF THE GROVE. THAT'S A TOTAL OF 850 MEN, AND HE SLEW THEM WITH THE SWORD. CAN YOU IMAGINE WHAT THIS MUST HAVE LOOKED LIKE TO KILL 850 PEOPLE PERSONALLY. MAN, IT MUST HAVE BEEN A GROTESQUE SIGHT. AND SHE SAYS, I'M GOING TO MAKE YOUR LIFE LIKE THEM BY THIS TIME TOMORROW. AND IT SAYS, WHEN HE SAW THAT, HE AROSE AND FLED. WHEN HE SAW WHAT? I MEAN, WHAT A GRAPHIC PICTURE HE MUST HAVE HAD JUST THE DAY BEFORE FROM KILLING THESE 850 PEOPLE. AND HE SAW HIMSELF DEAD THE WAY THAT HE HAD KILLED THESE OTHER PEOPLE. HE SAW THAT. HE AROSE AND FLED. NOW GET A PICTURE OF THIS. HE HAD STOOD AGAINST THE KING, AGAINST THE ARMIES, AGAINST THE PROPHETS, AGAINST THE ENTIRE NATION, THOUSANDS AND THOUSANDS OF PEOPLE, AND HE CAME OUT TOTALLY SUCCESSFUL. BUT NOW HERE COMES A WOMAN WITH A NOTE. NOW THERE'S NO DOUBT THAT JEZEBEL WANTED HIM DEAD, BUT IF SHE WANTED HIM DEAD, SHE'D HAVE ACTUALLY SENT, or, OR LET ME REPHRASE THAT. SHE WANTED HIM DEAD, BUT IF SHE HAD BEEN READY TO JUST KILL HIM, SHE WOULD HAVE SENT A SOLDIER WITH A SWORD, NOT A MESSENGER WITH A NOTE. SHE WAS TRYING TO INTIMIDATE HIM BECAUSE PUBLIC OPINION HAD TURNED AGAINST HER AND SHE COULDN'T GET BY WITH KILLING ELIJAH. BUT SHE WAS THREATENING HIM. SHE WAS INTIMIDATING HIM AND HE RAN FROM A WOMAN WITH A NOTE. AND HE GIVES US THE REASON WHY. LOOK AT THIS. 
IT SAYS HE WENT HIMSELF A DAY'S JOURNEY INTO THE WILDERNESS AND CAME AND SAT DOWN UNDER A JUNIPER TREE AND HE REQUESTED FOR HIMSELF THAT HE MIGHT DIE AND SAID, IT IS ENOUGH NOW, O LORD, TAKE AWAY MY LIFE, FOR I AM NOT BETTER THAN MY FATHER'S. DID YOU KNOW THAT STATEMENT RIGHT THERE IS VERY REVEALING? IT MEANS THAT he, PRIOR TO THIS TIME, HE THOUGHT HE WAS BETTER THAN HIS FATHER'S. HE GOT TO READING HIS OWN PRESS RELEASES. HE GOT TO SEEING, I CALL FOR A DROUGHT, AND THEN I ENDED THE DROUGHT, AND THEN I RAISED A WOMAN'S SON FROM THE DEAD, AND I MULTIPLIED HER FOOD FOR THREE AND A HALF YEARS, AND I CHALLENGED THE PROPHETS OF BAAL, AND I CALLED FIRE DOWN OUT OF HEAVEN, AND I KILLED 850 MEN WITH THE SWORD, AND I COMMANDED THE KING, AND THE KING IS NOW OBEYING ME, AND YOU KNOW WHAT? HE GOT TO THINKING, I AM AWESOME. I AM SOMEBODY SPECIAL. AND IT'S REFLECTED BECAUSE WHEN HE FINALLY RAN FROM JEZEBEL AND CAME TO HIMSELF, HE SAYS, GOD, NOW TAKE AWAY MY LIFE, FOR I AM NOT BETTER THAN MY FATHER'S. HE WASN'T EVER BETTER THAN HIS FATHER'S. HE MIGHT HAVE BEEN USED BY GOD, BUT IT WAS HIS PRIDE THAT LIFTED HIM UP. AGAIN, I USE THAT SCRIPTURE IN PROVERBS CHAPTER 16, VERSE 18. PRIDE GOES BEFORE DESTRUCTION AND A haughty SPIRIT BEFORE A FALL. AND SO, SEE, I'VE SEEN ALL OF THESE THINGS. I SAW SAUL THAT WHEN HE WAS LITTLE IN HIS OWN EYES, GOD LIFTED HIM UP. I SAW DAVID THAT AS LONG AS HE WAS, YOU KNOW, UNDER PRESSURE AND HIS LIFE WAS IN DOUBT, HE SOUGHT GOD AND HE SUBMITTED TO GOD AND HE WAS A MAN AFTER GOD'S OWN HEART. BUT WHEN HE HAD ACCOMPLISHED ALL OF HIS GOALS, THEN HIS HEART WAS LIFTED UP WITH PRIDE. HE QUIT DOING WHAT GOD ANOINTED HIM TO DO. HE WAS BORED. HE WAS SLEEPING DURING THE DAY AND HE GOT TO WHERE HE NO LONGER WAS HAVING THAT INTIMATE RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD. HE DESPISED GOD AND COMMITTED ADULTERY AND MURDER TRYING TO COVER UP HIS ADULTERY. AND HERE'S ELIJAH WHO DID ALL OF THESE GREAT THINGS, BUT WHEN HE GOT LIFTED UP WITH PRIDE AND THOUGHT HE WAS BETTER THAN HIS FATHER'S, NOBODY'S EVER RAISED SOMEBODY FROM THE DEAD. NOBODY'S EVER CALLED FIRE DOWN FROM HEAVEN LIKE THIS. AND HE GOT LIFTED UP WITH PRIDE AND HE FELL. PRIDE GOES BEFORE DESTRUCTION, A haughty SPIRIT BEFORE A FALL. AND SO BECAUSE I WAS AWARE OF THESE THINGS, YOU KNOW WHAT, THE LAST HURDLE THAT I REALLY HAD TO CROSS WAS, GOD, IF I SUBMIT TO YOU AND IF I ALLOW YOU TO USE ME AND HAVE A MINISTRY THAT SPANS THE WORLD AND REACHES PEOPLE ALL OVER THE WORLD, I MIGHT LOSE MY RELATIONSHIP WITH YOU, THAT I MIGHT GET LIFTED UP IN PRIDE. AND THAT WAS A FEAR TO ME. I WAS LIMITING WHAT GOD COULD DO THROUGH ME. I KNEW GOD'S CALL ON MY LIFE. HE HAD CALLED ME TO REACH PEOPLE ALL OVER THE WORLD. I'VE KNOWN FOR OVER, RIGHT NOW, 50 YEARS THAT GOD WANTED ME TO HAVE A WORLDWIDE MINISTRY. BUT IN 2002, I WAS LIMITING HIM BECAUSE I WAS FEARFUL OF WHAT SUCCESS WOULD DO TO ME if I, IF I STARTED REACHING PEOPLE AND GOD HAD TO HELP ME GET OVER THAT. THERE MAY BE MANY OTHER REASONS. AGAIN, I'D ENCOURAGE YOU TO GET THESE MATERIALS BECAUSE I TALK ABOUT ALL KINDS OF THINGS, THE FEAR OF MAN, THE FEAR OF SUCCESS, THE FEAR OF REJECTION, JUST BEING LAZY OR COMFORTABLE. I DEAL WITH A LOT OF THINGS AND STARTING ON TOMORROW'S BROADCAST, I'M GOING TO START DEALING WITH uh, SOMETHING THAT IS SUPER POWERFUL ABOUT HOW YOU HAVE TO SEE YOURSELF SUCCEED ON THE INSIDE. YOU HAVE TO IMAGINE YOURSELF SUCCESSFUL. SO AGAIN, I'D LIKE TO REFER YOU TO THESE MATERIALS THAT I'VE GOT. I'VE GOT THIS BOOK ENTITLED DON'T LIMIT GOD, AND THEN I HAVE A STUDY GUIDE THAT IS ALSO ON DON'T LIMIT GOD. THIS IS PRIMARILY FOR YOU TO TEACH OTHER PEOPLE. WE HAVE CD'S AND DVD'S, AND WE ALSO HAVE THIS FREE LITTLE STICKER ENTITLED DON'T LIMIT GOD. YOU PEEL IT OFF OF HERE AND PUT IT ON YOUR WINDSHIELD, ON A MIRROR OR SOMETHING. IT'LL BE A GREAT REMINDER. LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER, AND THEN PLEASE CALL OR WRITE TODAY. THE FIRST BOOK THAT REALLY STRUCK ME WAS DON'T LIMIT GOD. Uh, WORKING WITH OUR SON, uh, AND HIM TELLING US EVERY DAY THE THINGS THAT ARE HAPPENING. HE SAYS, WELL, MOM, we, WE CAN'T DO THIS BECAUSE. AND I SAYS, SON, DON'T LIMIT GOD. AND THEN ANDREW WOMACK HAD THAT ON THE TELEVISION, AND I HAD TO GET THAT RIGHT AWAY. AND SO I SENT IT TO HIM RIGHT AWAY. AND THAT IS KIND OF LIKE A THEME, IS JUST THAT IS MINISTERS EVERY DAY TO US, ACTUALLY. Discover how to stop limiting what God wants to do in you and through you when you get Andrew's teaching titled, Don't Limit God. It's available in either a CD or a DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. You can also get this teaching as a book or a companion study guide available in either English or Spanish. 
Each of these valuable resources are available for a gift of any amount. Every book and album also includes the Don't Limit God sticker, or you can get the sticker free of charge when you go to awmi.net. Limit one free per household. If you'd like additional stickers, they're available for a gift of $1 or more. The fourth audio teaching in today's series is available for a gift of any amount when you write or call. We encourage everyone to give, but if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide this fourth CD free of charge. This is the last day we'll be offering this teaching, so be sure to respond today. You can order resources or become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download many free resources. Or call our helpline Monday through Friday from 4.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time. Our helpline number is 719-635-1111. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. I'd like to give you just a heads up that on July the 2nd through the 6th, we're going to have our Summer Family Bible Conference. I know it's still a ways off and we'll be giving you more detail, but I want you to mark your calendar and prepare to come and be with us. It's going to be a special time. This is one of my favorite times of the year and we have things for the entire family. So mark your calendars July the 2nd through the 6th at our facility in Woodland Park called The Sanctuary on July the 2nd through the 6th. Hello, this is Andrew Womack, and I'd like to encourage you to check out our Gospel Truth TV. That's gospeltruth.tv. It's an internet-based television network, and you are not only going to get my teaching, but you are also going to hear instructors from Karis Bible College. You've got well-known people on there like Kenneth Copeland, Creflo Dollar, Jesse Duplantis, Keith Moore. These are all people that are friends of mine. We have differences and variances, but we're all preaching the same thing, and it's a safe place to be. You are going to be blessed. So check it out. It's 24-7, gospeltruth.tv. Hello, this is Andrew Womack, and I just would like to encourage you to help us get the gospel out through social media. By joining us on Facebook, you will receive exclusive content, like Andrew's weekly Tuesday Night Live Bible study, teachings, live streams, and Q&A sessions with Andrew. And we've sent out over 42,000 ministry responses to people who have contacted us through social media. And we would just like to see this increase. So we would like to see you like our Facebook page to share it with other people and you be a minister of the gospel by sharing this with someone else. 